All right, so I am Dr. Linda Schott. I am from the University of Idaho, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, same concept interplay of manure and compaction, but from a soil health perspective, and hopefully bring a little bit of information together from, um, you know, based on what the other presenters have talked about. Uh, the goals, the general goal of today for this presentation that I'm giving is to talk briefly about the interplay between um, organic matter and soil structure, and then delve a little bit deeper into how manure impacts soil structure. Slides aren't advancing. There we go. So the technical definition of soil health, we just need to start with this, so we're all on the same page, is the capacity of soil to function as a vital living ecosystem that supplies sustains plants, animals, and humans. That's from the FAO. And really it just provides some ecosystem services that I know that you've heard of, such as nutrient cycling, water infiltration availability, filtering and buffering. But really um, today the focus is physical stability and support, not only for plants and plant roots, but also for equipment that we're taking into our crop fields. Um, there's been a lot of focus on soil health and how practices affect it. Um, and like these practices of cover cropping and tillage, but not so much about manure. Um, and in general, the, the, the thing I want you to keep in mind is that it really boils down to practices that increase soil organic matter, increase soil health. And so a lot of what I'm gonna talk about comes back to organic matter. Okay, so it's been shown in a lot of research studies over and over again that soil organic matter improves soil health, but I'm going to specifically just focus on the physical properties. So um, when you uh, add more organic matter to the soil, you get you might get an increase of soil water holding capacity. So that's actually dependent on the um, soil type. Um, if you have a, you know, a silty loam or something like that, your ability to increase your water holding capacity might be limited, especially compared to like a soil or a clay. Um, but it does decrease compactability and it does decrease bulk density. And we'll um, kind of talk about that. So the reason that organic matter specifically decreases bulk density is that it is the, the particles of organic matter are less dense than a soil particle. So if you think of soil as a brick and organic matter as a sponge, you know, and they were the same size, I'm sure you're, you know, put your hands up, think about which one would be heavier, the brick, even though it's the same volume than the sponge. Um, and that's a, a decrease of density. So if you have in the same area, more organic matter, it means you have less not necessarily less mineral, but that whole thing is, um, is lighter. And um, just like a, to start off, I'm gonna, you know, summarize a lot, you know, probably dozens and dozens of studies to, that say manure increases soil organic matter um, between 10 and 100%, depending on the studies that you look at. And it really depends on the amount of carbon that is added to the system um, and about, so manure contains carbon. Um, that's why manure is really great um, for soil health. It's a carbon, it's a food source for microbes and it's lighter than um, soil mineral. And about 20% of that carbon will persist long-term from a manure application. So as you increase your carbon, your microbes can help convert that into organic matter. And so your organic matter increases with manure applications. Um, and again, just a, a concept uh, I briefly talked about, organic matter is like a sponge. Um, and so if you think about what a sponge is, um, it holds a lot of water. It is, you know, nice and springy um, compared to a brick that's really hard. Um, and I want you to keep that in your mind. Um, and again, when you increase organic matter, you might increase um, your ability to hold water, but really you're gonna reduce your 
density, and compactibility. And there's a lot of ways to measure compaction, bulk density and compactibility in your soil. And we're gonna kind of go over what those measurements are and the effect that manure has been shown to have on them. And all of this data comes from research studies, which I'll kind of talk about um, some things to think about of what we can do with this data um, compared to you know, producer or, producer or someone who is enacting these principles in the field might um, come up against. Okay, so here's just an image of uh, bulk density. And I want you to think, um, this isn't, it's a good image, but really these two boxes that are shown on here should be the same size. Um, and on the, the left is the non-compacted. You can see that there's more air and water space between the soil particles compared to the compacted. Um, there's less air and water space. In an ideal illustration, the, the boxes would be the exact same and there would just be more soil particles um, added to the compacted image. And so if you think about a non-compacted soil that is able to hold more water and also more air, and those things are very important for crop production because you know roots, um, they need air and water. Microbes need air and water. Um, and so in that compacted soil, you might not be able to get that. Um, and the um, manure across, again, dozens and dozens of studies has been shown to decrease bulk density. Um, it's been shown to decrease the state of compaction in the soil by an average of 15%. But again, it's dependent on the amount of carbon that you've added. So um, it doesn't necessarily matter the type of manure. So, um, you know, a liquid manure does have less solids, so there's less carbon in that. But if you take it on a, um, a dry weight basis or, um, you know, just look at the amount of carbon that you're adding, um, you can you can get at that. So it might take longer to build your carbon and organic matter with swine manure compared to, um, you know, feedlot manure, but you can build it the same. Um, they both have carbon in them. They're both good food sources for microbes and can get be converted into organic matter. Um, and again, so this is, research-based, right? These are from research studies. And this is kind of the first opportunity to talk about, um, you know, research studies are really great because we have, you know, like I said, this is probably 25 to 50 studies have shown manure decreases bulk density, but it's not necessarily ideal to do this in a, um, in a research um, setting per se, because if you think about these research studies, they're small plots. Um, you're either not using the same size equipment that you would when, uh, as a producer, or, you know, if you're actually doing um, manure application on a commercial level field, um, you might not have, you know, it might be over trafficked. Um, you know, if you think about the number of operations that you have to do in a really small area, the same locations are gonna get driven over, over and over and over again. And so they might be overly compacted compared to a producer field because you've just got more tire tracks. So just something to think about. And at the end, I'm gonna come back around and talk about why we can still use these studies though. Um, the, the principles are definitely still there um, that manure does decrease bulk density. So another way to think about um, compaction is compactability. So this is really a measure of how susceptible a soil is to compaction. And Charles talked about this a little bit in his presentation. Um, this is something that you can test with a penetrometer, which is that rod um, shown on the far right of the screen. And you just push it in and it tells you, um, you know, the pounds per square inch, the PSI, that it takes to force that rod in. And at about 300 PSI, crop roots can't really break through anymore. Um, and so that's when you get nutrient uptake and water, water uptake issues potentially with your crops. So, I mean, it's just an illustration, but you can see that those crops look very different. One is more vigorous than the other one. Um, and obviously the, 
the plant roots are able to go much deeper below that level of compaction. Um, so we talk about compactability. Manure decreases penetration resistance, so the force it takes to push that rod in, compared to when no amendment is used. So you know, in research, we always have this um, treatment of you don't add anything, no fertilizer, no carbon, no manure, nothing like that. But there was no real difference between inorganic fertilizer usage and manure. And that might be because, um, you know, and when you're applying inorganic fertilizer, you're still, it's still an operation, you're still using equipment. And then it still comes back to, you know, in these research studies, they're smaller. And so again, these areas might still be over trafficked because of, um, you know, all the operations that need to be done in a smaller area, you know, maybe a 30, uh, foot by 30 foot plot or 50 foot by 50 foot plot. Um, this is getting better because it's, you know, this has an action, this measurement compactability, penetration resistance has an actual um, outcome. It's, it's related to plant roots. So if you get a number like 300 or getting up there, plant roots can't get below that. So that's, you know, that's very valuable. That's a valuable uh, uh, piece of information to have. And then the last thing I want to talk about is still compactability, which again is how susceptible soil is to compaction. But now I want to focus on when wet. Um, so Ian, he talked about, um, you know, all the tire work that they did, wet soil versus dry soil and why that kind of happens. Um, another really quick way to think about it is, you know, this image that you can compact dry soil less than wet soil is if you think about, again, a wet sponge, I'm gonna kind of put, I have a sponge here. Um, this is wet and you know you can, you can move it, you can um, compress it really easily, but it bounces back, right? Um, that's really nice. In a dry sponge, and you can do this at home, um, there is, you know, it's not quite as um, spongy, so you can't compress it as much, but it still does bounce back. You know, there's very little that you can do here, but it, it's, it's less. And so if you think um, in soil, the, the main difference would be when it's wet, it can't always bounce back. You know, the soil compresses, but it can't bounce back as much without that organic matter. And so what does manure do to compactability when wet? And this is where the real key is. So there's been only a handful of studies that have looked at that, this admittedly, but that manure increases resilience to compaction under wet conditions. So when you add manure um, compared to inorganic fertilizer or no amendment, you build organic matter, which then means you can, um, you know, if the soil is just a little bit wetter, um, you don't have, you have the same compaction in a system that was a little bit drier, but had no manure. So that means you can apply manure to a manured field when it's a little bit wetter than what you could driving that same piece of, or, you know, driving equipment through a field that has just had inorganic fertilizer applied. And that's because of that organic matter allows the soil to bounce back. You know, it's bouncy. It's not as it gets crushed and then it stays crushed. So that's pretty important that you do have that resiliency. So you have a um, maybe a better, uh, not maybe, a wider window of when you're able to apply manure. You know, if it's still a little bit wet, you can still get out there and apply because you know that your soil will bounce back if you've had some manure applications before. And that's kind of when this whole concept gets tricky because um, it's something, you know, you have to start somewhere. Um, and so this is kind of where we bring it all together um, of you should follow some BMPs to optimize soil health. So um, compaction is caused by heavy machinery, foot traffic over tilling and working the soil when wet. So the basics are don't do this, <laughs> um, but that's not possible. You know, if you're going to be applying manure, it does require heavy equipment, right? Um, and sure, you can um, try to avoid working the soil when wet, which is a really great principle, but, you know, the weather are, you know, depending on where you are in the country, springs are a little bit damp. Um, so here's some, some better 
um, some better BMPs to think about. Avoid applying or spreading when the soil is really wet. Um, so wait, you know, do your best to wait for it to dry out. Maybe there's a better time of year, maybe um, that you can think about applying it, um, that you're not quite as wet or, you know, trying to think ahead and be um, logistical about it. Use traffic control. So um, for your different operations, for manure application, but also your other operations in general too, because that will limit the, the area of the field that you're potentially compacting, right? Um, and other principles that were discussed previously, like thinking about tire pressure and your equipment choice and things like that, just to be more thoughtful about the whole, the whole premise. But once you start applying manure and you start building your organic matter and increasing that, you are building resilience to compaction. So, um, you know, it's that interplay at the beginning, it's a little bit complicated, but once you're off and running, um, you have a lot of benefit from the manure. If you can get through those initial growing pains of the compaction it is causing when you start off with, could start. And so um, to wrap up, manure improves soil health, specifically these physical properties by decreasing bulk density, decreasing compactability, and increasing resiliency to compaction when the soil is wet, which is when it's most susceptible to um, compaction is when it's wet. I just want to make some acknowledgments um, about all of the funding that went into this. I know it's just a lot of research studies, but um, a lot of information went into these resources. Thank you.